Hey guys, good evening. It is our power hour for February 22nd. We are going to begin with a 10 minute figure drawing warm up. I welcome you guys to go grab your sketchbooks and draw along with me. So we are going to be using Senshi Stock for their wonderful reference. They have a Patreon where you can support their phenomenal work. I'm going to switch the view over to monitor and desk so that hopefully you can see both. And I'm going to go ahead and get started sketching. So today we have kind of an unusual pose. I thought it would be a good one to start with. And Joseph, well, actually I can drop the link myself. So if you're interested in Hey, Nisa, how are you? If you're interested in using Senshi Stock for later reference, you can find it right there. Hey, Madeline, good evening. So since she's in kind of a crouched pose, I'm going to use a triangle to kind of help me place the figure. Oh yeah, of course, thank you for asking. Hopefully that's not so big that you guys can't see what I'm doing. So how has everybody's week been? What have you guys been up to? Feel free to drop links to whatever you've been working on in the chat. Joseph or Kino Kitsune will approve them. I always love looking at y'all's work. Ooh, this one is an interesting one. I think we see more of her back than I realized. In fact, looking at it, her shoulder is actually pretty low down. Actually, her torso is further back than I first sketched it, so she's more over than I thought. So I'm going to grab a piece of tracing paper and just kind of redraw it. This is some of the Sailor Moon washi tape I got in my Zen Pop box. I should be getting another one really soon. I don't know where it is. I think it should have gotten here by now. Although it is flying all the way over from Osaka and that does take time. So for me, next week is the last official class for this semester. I'm, I've been calling it semesters even though it's not really a semester this semester of making comics. So hopefully over the week, people are going to send me scans of their comic pages so I can collate them into zines and get them printed for them. And then next class, hopefully they'll be assembling those zines in class because we have a mini comic exchange coming up at one of the local zine stores. I say one of, but I think it is the only zine store here in Nashville. In fact, tomorrow, Joseph and I are going to go down there, or I'm going to go down there. Someone's going down there. Definitely will be me involved in going down there to talk to the owner about logistics. I'm pretty excited about that. This little class has definitely grown and developed in its short lifespan and I just signed up to teach another six weeks of it at the end of this summer so hopefully we can get another zine exchange like that going because that'd be really cool what am 
I even doing? This evening it's like, I don't know how to draw. This one? Yeah. Look at the the reference. Her arm's pretty tucked in. You see a lot of her back in this one too. So it's interesting because it's an overhead shot. So we're getting some down angle, but you also see both her back and her front. So this is not an angle I have a lot of experience with drawing, which is why I kind of picked it as our warm up. If in the future you guys want me to pick easier poses, just let me know. The only downside to me with this is that I can't really keep chat up while I'm drawing from reference because then it takes up a lot of the screen and you guys can't necessarily see what's going on. So I will get caught up with chat in a moment. Oh, hey, how are you? Oh, that's really cool. Do you know what figure Ari is? So, um, yeah, it is. So doing like figure drawing studies every day in February, I've already fallen off the wagon, <laughs> but I'd like to climb back on for March. So that's awesome. I hope you're able to achieve your goal, Madeline. Ooh, her bust is, boy, this is like a, <laughs> this is a wonky one for me today. Oh, nice. I'm glad you can make it too. Oh, her head should be over more too. That would make a lot of sense. Let's see if I've got any post-its handy. Also, big thanks to Joseph. He's reading the stream. Not every single thing, but he's been reading the stream to me so I can kind of keep up. And I definitely appreciate that. Oh, I can't really see. I want to redraw the whole thing because I only have two minutes left. But I definitely want to better understand this pose. Oh. <laughs> Well, no. How how dare I'm not even gonna get that far, I'll bet you. How dare you? I might talk about perspective grids all the time, but I don't I, I think they're a useful tool, but I don't like doing them. They're like there's I have so many least favorite parts of comics, but perspective grids are really up there. Another up there is standing at my printer for an hour printing blue lines. I didn't realize how acutely I hated it until I'm printing blue lines for my students and I'm printing not mine, but like three other people's stuff. How, how quickly it becomes painful because it has to be babysat. I can't just, uh, because I'm printing large format print pages, I can't just like fill the hopper and walk away. you guys are doing a better job with this pose than I am. I am struggling. That's good. Like anytime you're out of your depth, that's kind of good because it's like a new area that you can 
learn from. Maybe, maybe? I mean, like, in Kara, I really should be drawing more uh, down shots and extreme up shots. So... Oh, I hate painting floor. Chapter 8 has so much floor. It's so, so the floors in Kara's house are dark wood. So not only is it very boring to paint, but it requires multiple layers to actually do it. Oh, cool. That what? Is it Croakley Cafe? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing those. I knew Croakley was really promoting that. They're such a good resource, too. Because they have figure drawing sessions um, where they walk you through what they're doing and why. Alright, I'm going to call that done since it has been about 10 minutes. And done beats perfect. Whoa. But the semester only just started, Kino Kitsune. No, I know what you mean. Oh, are you doing anything for fun for spring break, at least? Oh, Zora linked something that is probably cute. Oh, thank you for linking um, the pose directly, Kino Kitsune. Oh, cool. So is this a, um, I think I remember you talking to me about this earlier, like a while back. So is it like a group collective thing? Hey, Hema, how are you? It's been a long time. So that was our 10 minute figure drawing warm up. Thank you guys for drawing along with me or just hanging out with me while we do it. Next up is the introduction. So I think most of you know me either in real life or virtually through the wonders that are the internet. Sorry about that. It took a moment for me to get organized. But I am a comic artist and illustrator. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and I create art and comic resources that are, for the most part, free to consume online. I also teach comics through Nashville Community Ed and on occasion through St. Charles Parish Libraries. So this is one of the ways you can help support what I do, and several of you guys already do. And I want to thank you guys so much for that. And that's going to lead into my art nerd shout outs in just a moment. But this is a quick sneak peek of what my wonderful art nerds get access to. They get access to all of the materials that I create for my making comics class here in Nashville. And that is a lot of comic tutorials. All right, so I want to do two art nerd shout outs this evening. And I have them written up. I want to give a shout out to Jill Wiswall for being a superb mom and a fellow watercolor artist. Jill's support and encouragement has meant a lot to me over the past two years, and I always enjoy her comments. I particularly like it when Jill sends me her art. It's been a pleasure watching her develop as an artist. I also want to give a shout out to Heidi, who is a fellow comic artist currently working on the YA comic Sons of Fire. You can purchase volume one through Amazon, and I will drop a link to that in a moment. And you can also check out more of Heidi's art on Instagram. I will show you guys that in a second as well, as well as on their website. I highly recommend you check out their site because Heidi has several beautiful books available for purchase, including a coloring book and an art tutorial book. And I mentioned that because I know last week coloring books were a hot topic. If you like the look of Heidi's art and you're in Portland right now, you're in luck. They're tabling at the Wizard World Portland Artist Alley this weekend, so go support their work. And this is Heidi's Instagram, where you can see beautiful art, beautiful comics, and a very cute little cat loaf. 
and here is Heidi's website. And if you would like me to do a feature on you and your art, I have a tier available to art nerds. In fact, I'm running a special right now where for $10 a month, you enter the pot for my art nerd shout outs. And I do, I want to say eight of them a month. So you've got a pretty good shot at getting doubles. And this would be Heidi's store. They also have t-shirts and prints, all sorts of goodies. So thank you so much, Jill and Heidi. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Hey, Hunter, how are you? How long are your semesters, Kino Kitsune? All right, so I have done the shout outs. I am going to swatch some Da Vinci iridescent watercolors. Kino Kitsune sent me these a while back. I really like Da Vinci watercolors in general. Actually, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Let me switch the view for y'all. There we go. Ah, it's like magic, they just appeared. Uh, Kino Kitsune sent me these a while back, and I actually haven't had a chance to swatch them. I know, hard to believe. But since I swatched some of the watercolors that Heidi sent last week, and those were iridescent, I thought it would be really fun to swatch these as well. Yep, on the same paper. You got it, dude. So I'm going to use one of my delightful white pens. Oh, that is almost non-existent there. We can do better than that. I'm going to swatch them on black paper so we can see how iridescent they are as well as on watercolor paper. And this would be Arteza watercolor paper. I've been using it primarily for swatches. Oh, I thought you were grabbing me a cup of water. I got all excited there. Oh, that is a long semester, Kino Kitsune. Jeez. I mean, I say that, but you know, semester started in January and went on till May, but we had like spring break and we had Easter break and we'd get time off for Mardi Gras because it was in New Orleans. So it really wasn't that bad. So these seem like they're pretty dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of spread some water on them and give them a chance to reconstitute. Hopefully these aren't like some Daniel Smith colors, like once they're dry, they're just dry. Like Mayan blue never reconstitutes properly. But that also means they get like all of December and then all of January. So they get a two month winter break. That's almost as long as having a summer break. I mean, they also have a summer break, right? Okay, we are starting with Hansa Yellow Light. And these look like they are regular Da Vinci watercolors with an iridescent medium mixed in, maybe mica. They are a little bit slower to reconstitute than the other Da Vinci watercolors I've worked with. And since Kino Kitsune made these for me, I'm pretty sure these came from a tube into a, into a pan. Okay, that is Hands of Yellow Light. Next up is Raw Sienna. What? I said, do you put your brush in the pans when you're painting, or just 
Why wouldn't I put it in? Joseph asked if I push put my brush in the pans when I'm painting as well. Why would I not put my... Sometimes, but um, if I want like a full intensity color, I'll go straight from the pan. And that was Burnt Sienna that I just swatched. Yeah, their iridescent set is usually on a pretty good sale. The blue is really pretty. And that is phthalo blue, and that's like an electric blue. It's really nice. I really like Da Vinci watercolors in general. I have their mixing set and I love it. I'm probably going to end up refilling it. That was Naphthol Red. And next we have Phthalo Green. So these are all pretty intense. Ooh. Yeah, ooh, I bet it does. The blue is like an electric blue with the iridescent medium in it. It's a really pretty phthalo blue. So I'm going to set that aside for a little while to dry. And next I'm going to swatch them on our black paper. I'm going to do it in the same order. So starting with Hansy Yellow Light. And then while these dry, I will do the sketch requests that I got this evening. All right, so that is Hansy Yellow Light. Next is Raw Sienna. So I know Maddie's working, uh, doing figuary, so I assume they've been drawing from reference every day have what what have you guys drawn from reference this week i've been doing a lot of fold references a lot of fold studies so i've been working from other artists existing materials and from photos that i've googled and it's always weirdly specific things like um uh bent knee jeans you, when you Google, like, sitting in jeans, you get some really weird results. Oh, nice. How's that coming along, Hunter? All right, so that is our six colors. We have phthalo green, naphthol red, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and then Hansa yellow light. And I'm going to, so next up is sketch requests. So I will put these aside to dry. Better than you dared hope. That's awesome. So you've surprised yourself with how good it's turning out. Isn't that like the best? The best feeling when it's like, oh, I'm a better artist than I realized. I must have leveled up somewhere. Yeah, I mailed the, wait. No, Indy, I'm still waiting on you to pay me. Did you pay me and not say something? Or did I mail the purple cat? Maybe I did. I'm going through it and I'm not seeing it in the pile, so I must have mailed it. Have you not received it yet? Hi, Catherine. No, here's the purple cat. Yeah, I'm waiting on you to, to PayPal me the $5 to mail it. So you paid me already? All right, um, I'm gonna double check on that and I will email you and we'll work on something from there, okay? Oh, I love the Blick sketchbooks. So I am about to start my other sketch request for this evening.
And the first one we're starting out with is Fox from Kino Kitsune's comic Linked, which y'all can read at linkedcomic.com. I want desk and monitor. There we go. This mister right here. Okay, well, I will double check that after the stream. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that nerd, that sugar loving nerd. Actually, that gives me a good idea. So Fox likes tea, or rather likes a hot solution of sugar that has looked at tea leaves at some point. Are you renaming it from Power Hour to like something more specific? Sure, you can just name it Power Hour for right now. And I'll have his glasses pushed up because they would get all foggy anyway. If you like manga, magic, and mayhem, you guys should definitely read Linked. Why can't someone draw nerdy glasses on a large scale? I'm trying to draw them large enough that they would actually go over his eyes and not just look like, an, like a weird little accessory. <laughs> oh, that's right! Something does happen to his glasses, and you guys should read it to find out what. I guess he must have found them this moment. Well, if you enjoy manga, Kino Kitsune's style is... I love it, because it's very shoujo manga. So, you know, it makes my Kokoro go doki doki.
does someone not buy them for? I don't want to spoil it, so look away for a moment. But also, you should look at this gorgeous art, for reals. Kino Kitsune's art is so nice. I just wanted to get better reference of Fox and his fluffy, fluffy hair. All right, well, I'm sorry about that. I'll get it out to you as soon as possible. I've actually quit offering to mail sketches out. So um, I apologize for that. It wasn't like I was consistently checking and that's my fault. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to remember. I wish I had gotten an email or a notification about it, but that is on me. So I apologize for that. And I'm so sorry you've been sick. I hope you feel better. It takes a lot to be sicker than a dying cat because I have a very sick cat who has cataract problems and she's already always miserable. So I can only imagine how miserable you must have felt. Becca, what are you doing? Ah, <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Ah, I'm going to end up drawing his hair like so big. Why? Why? It should not be this big. It is kind of floofy, but it was, like, crazy too big. Like, didn't even look like him for a moment too big. And the thing is, if he's in a cup of tea, it's going to get even bigger because it's, like, the humidity is going to make it floof. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. I'm really sorry, Hunter. That sounds rough. Oil the size of a tennis ball. Gee whiz. Is this a common ailment with rabbits?
Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a common ailment with rabbits? I've never, I've never kept rabbits. Um, I used, to, or I do keep lizards, and um, geckos tend to also get these kind of like tumor lumps things. And it's to the point where I don't necessarily think it's worth taking it to the taking the animal to the vet because I've had two go down that way, and the vet charged me five hundred bucks each, and then they died anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. I guess I just wish, in my instance, that vets would be honest about what they can and cannot do. Uh, because this vet was supposedly um, a herp vet, and herps refers to like uh, lizards and amphibians. Oh, raccoon's doing really well. Um, raccoon is one of my two really old tortoiseshells. She's the one who, gosh, raccoon has had a million health problems, like a cyst on her elbow, and that's doing better. And what else has been going on with raccoon that she's recovered from? Her, her health in... Oh, she has high blood pressure, but it's under control now with pills, and then she's on, like, special kidney diet, but she seems very genki and energetic, so she's doing good. Yeah. And Bo's been very, very, very cute lately. Wow, I do the same one twice. He is a snuggle boy. He's a sweet boy. Oh, good. Yeah, cats are resilient. All right, so that is a fox. A fox. Done. Next up, I believe we have Zora's character. Oh, so cute. Sorry, I know I get loud. Let me make sure. Yeah, okay. Would you go get me a soylent, please? Thank you. You should. All right, so, and we have some character information. Princess Lunella is the nine-year-old daughter of the Moon Kingdom's monarchs. Born from the seed and a drop of blood, she is said to never grow larger than her father's thumb. I like her a lot. I think she's really cute. Hey, B, how are you? Glad you can make it. I'm doing sketch requests right now, but if there's any like art supply demo, because I know you're a fellow art supply nerd that you want to see, or if you have any questions, just let me know. Hmm. 
Those are shooting soylent all over the room. Ugh. This stream brought to you by Strawberry Soylent. So let's see, we have hamster people, we have rabbit people, we have a bird person just came in, we have a lot of cat people. What is the most unusual pet you've ever had? And that's an open question to anybody. Oh, Zora, it, Drew's character. Glowfish? A Pikachu? Of course you are, Hima. A Pikachu person. That is the truth. When I was a girl, I used to fancy myself a herpetologist, so I would go out and catch lizards and salamanders at my grandparents' place and keep them in terrariums. Ooh, that is unusual. We have... What about Cleo? Not your pet, it's my pet. <laughs> I'll allow it. You fell in love with all the animals, Hunter. Like you couldn't, you can no longer pick a favorite. It's like, they're all precious. Xerox is just finally warming up enough to show you how weird he is. You've never kept like frogs, Joseph? Not as pets. Not as pets. Ferrets are so cute. Ooh. I wonder why they won't let you meet the cow. Mm -hmm. 
This child is already a very cute nugget. How did you not have a goat? Oh, I could see you with a goat. You're such a goat person, Dozo. I like her design a lot. Since she's flower based, it's like hitting two of my favorite things, tiny people and flowers. Aww. This, I cannot take credit for her. This is Zora's character and the ref for her is so precious. I have had, Joseph just asked if I've had more characters or more pets. I think I've had more pets. Unless you count every character I've made up for Inktober. <laughs> and then I think... Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. If I don't have like a backstory for them, yeah, then I don't consider them my characters. No. I've drawn a lot of pancake. I've done pancake doing all sorts of different poses, so that's basically turnarounds. Are you saying Pancake isn't a character? No. <gasps> How dare you. He'll bite you. Yeah, he's been on a couple of covers. I can't help it. He's so cute. He's a cat. Oh, he's the cat character from 7-Inch Kara. I think food names are great for pets. So, Although none of my pets are named after foods. Yet. Alrighty, so that is two characters down. He's a best boy. And then we have Rui, a very cute butterfly boy. fair and you can always um get caught up at and read the first volume for free
Oh, 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 aren't you fast? Fast on the tip taps. Ooh. That doesn't surprise me. Tumblr has been, that's like, I feel like that's a very interesting. Oh, it's Verizon. They're owned by Verizon, right? All right, whose baby is Rui? Raise your hand. Hi, Happy. Do you want to sit in my lap? Is that what you're looking at me for? Do you want to sit in my lap? Sorry, one of my cats. Come here. Come here. Come here, Pud. Oh. Ooh, good. All right, are you going to stay or are you going to jump off? Are you going to stay or are you going to jump off? You might stay. Sorry, she's, this one is 19 and she has a cataract that the vets are treating. So she hasn't been very friendly. And this is the first time she kind of like came out and acted like she wanted anybody to, I will give her a kiss. Come here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I kind of thought so. All right. Mostly from the email, but also for the cuteness. Is he more of a butterfly or a moth? <laughs> you know, it wouldn't all, it would also not surprise me if people were if some artists just try were trying to bring Tumblr down if that makes sense. How do I combat procrastination? So what I do, so procrastination usually stems from anxiety, right? Like when you're pr procrastinating the most, it's usually because you have a lot of anxiety about starting the project. So, or maybe just apathy, maybe you're kind of burnout. A zebra swallowtail butterfly. So what I help, what helps me and uh, this, might not work for you, but it helps me. Um, I will make lists. Why, why did you not make a new? Oh, I see. We're doing this thing. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to close out some tabs so I can see what I'm doing again. So I'll make lists and then I play a game of like, what's the least I can do? What is the smallest part of the task I can start that actually gets me started? And I just try to work my way through Come on. Through those sort of simple tasks. Ha! Oh, okay. I might have missed it. Sorry. What kind of procrastination are you dealing with? Is this like schoolwork or is this procrastination on starting a project you want to start? I may not know how to work the internet, it seems. Hey, Terry, how are you? Starting a project? Yeah, so let's say you're making a comic, right? And I will move this aside just for a second. Okay, so we're making a comic. Oh, see that makes it hard. Can you have YouTube up in the background and work around it, just using it as like background noise to keep you company? Yeah, what Kino Kitsune said. Or, well, if you're starting with a comic, um, maybe develop character designs. And then once you have your character designs, 
maybe start working on developing their personalities, thinking about their likes and their dislikes, and thinking about what sort of conflict or what sort of story is revolving around these characters. So then um, write a synopsis, a short version of the story. And then once you have your synopsis down where you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and knowing the end of your comic is super important because that's your roadmap. That's how you know where you're going to go. Um, so once you have your synopsis with your beginning, middle, and end figured out, maybe start scripting it. And what I like to do is I will break my synopsis down into chapters and flesh that out a little bit, add a little bit more detail, then break it into scenes and then break that into pages. And then once I have page by page plot breakdowns, I start scripting. And usually getting to this point here is one of the hardest parts. So after I've done scripting, well then maybe I'll do thumbnails, which is like a miniature version of your comic page. And once my thumbnails are done, I find it gets a lot easier. Like, because we've already gotten the ball rolling, we've already figured things out, it's just, keeping like putting the time in every day to work on the project so maybe dedicate an hour every day to work on this project or maybe dedicate um maybe you're not going to do a time amount but you're going to do one task every day oof i'm sorry terry you've been at work all day right And then, um, Kino Kitsune, don't you use, um, like, what's it called? Oh, these are gorgeous. Sorry. Oh, I know this character. I've seen you draw this character before. Yep, now you need to follow through. So then maybe having some accountability buddies, people who check in with you to make sure you're working on the project, people who are invested in the project and care about it. So what a lot of people do is they will talk about their project like on Twitter, because once you start talking about the project, you feel like you're obligated to work on the project. For sure, you know, yeah, for sure. Definitely talking to your friends about the project is a big part of making it real. Or, or your parents. Is this a project you've been wanting to work on for a really long time and you always seem to put it off? Also, this is a project that you're excited about. You want to make it happen. General Pieces is a really good start. Um, what do you want the finished project to be?
like a small pick or a small strip. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, they are good projects. I wasn't I wasn't saying they're not. Um Yeah, what Hunter said and if it's an illust if it's something like an illustration, even something as simple as a thumbnail doodle. Look, just like a really quick sketch that you're not particularly invested in, but it helps you get the idea out into the physical world. It helps you get the idea out onto paper is a good start. Or if you're having like page anxiety, because a lot of people will look at the blank page and it's just really hard to, to break it. One of the things I like to use is I use cheap sketchbooks and that way I'm not worried about whether I'm ruining a nice sketchbook. I don't care if I'm ruining a nice sketchbook because it's just a Blick sketchbook. It's not fancy. And then also nothing you put on the paper has to be permanent. There's always ways you can fix it or redraw it. You can um, do it digitally or you can slap a piece of tracing paper on top of it and redraw it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and getting practice sketching your characters, getting to know them helps make it feel more accessible. But what Kino Kitsune said earlier about um, not taking it to heart too much if your friends aren't interested in your project. I have friends who 100% do not care about Kara. They never ask, they don't care, they don't want me to talk to them about it, which hurts because it's important to me. But I respect that they're not interested. And then I have other people who are interested in it. So I can't judge the validity of my project just because it's not certain people's cup of tea. Not everybody's going to like all the same things. I mean, I have friends who do, um, what's the word that I'm looking, like very action oriented comics, which is not necessarily my thing either. I like action sometimes, but not necessarily a lot of action. <laughs> I read to relax. So, but that doesn't mean I don't think they're good artists and it's not that I don't think they're good comic artists. So it's not a judgment call on what they're producing. It's just not necessarily for me. Yeah, that's true. Doodling it out, sketching it out. You can always say, nah, doesn't work, not for me. Like you could, um, you could make your Inktober this year, you're gonna do 31 sketches for your comic. And while everybody's working on Inktober, you're doing character development sketches. What also might help is taking a class, not necessarily because you have something to learn, but doing something in a group setting where there are other people who can give you feedback and can give you encouragement can really help kind of get you motivated. At least you can maybe go next year, Hunter. I per I'm biased. I love 
I love school. I love classes. I think they're very fun, especially comics, drawing, illustration classes, because then you're with other people who are doing similar things. They kind of get you, you know? Um, even something like community ed might offer classes in what you're interested in learning how to do and at a very affordable price. Is this the professor you were concerned about um, during one of, like, I, I remember you bringing this up in Ink Drop one time. Is this the same professor, Hema? And I, my convention schedule right now is kind of up in the air. I'm waiting to hear back from a couple of shows, but I'm definitely going to be at Destrahan Comic Con because I'm going to be leading a couple of, well, a panel there. Well, I will at least be volunteering at MTAC and I have a panel that I'm doing on watercolor at MTAC. So I will be at MTAC. I just might not table. I'm also doing the Cherry Blossom Festival here. Your boy is so cute, Hima. I, would, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm not doing him justice because he's so cute. Oh, I also put in at Comics Crossroads in Ohio. Oh, I drew the wings down because he's sitting in the flower. And I thought if they were spread out, it would, like, you know, he'd be sitting on his wings. That would probably hurt. So I have them wrapped around him like in the reference. I'm not doing Noka's Fest this year because, um, yeah, it's just expensive for me to, yeah, they are petals. Uh, I could, I could color it in another color and that way maybe they will be a little more because I can see how they're getting kind of lost. They do look like they do like I see that I see it now. Yeah.
Here, I think that helps a little bit. Yeah, no, they would be broken wings then. All right, I think that catches me up with, oh, I, okay. I'm so sorry, you guys were probably hearing a million echoes. I apologize for that. Now you won't hear them. I think that catches me up with character sketches this evening. So we did three and I will show them to y'all. And you can go ahead and fill out a request for next week if you like, okay? So we have Fox from the comic Linked taking a nice hot tea bath in sugary tea water. Has to become one with the delicious tea. We have the adorable Lunella, who is a lunar thumbelina and she's so cute and she's flower based and I love her. And we have the beautiful Rui, an adorable butterfly boy. So thank you guys so much for letting me draw your characters. Let me grab, switch this out for a minute. So these are the Da Vinci watercolors we swatched earlier in the stream. This is still a little bit wet. You do see them a bit on the black paper. They're not quite as striking as the Hydracolor watercolors. They're a little less bold than some of the Daniel Smith colors we swatched last week. But I really like how they look on white paper. They have good color punch. Uh, Kabocha, would you happen to know, I mean, Kino Kitsune, I'm sorry. Would you happen to know if um, the way they make these is they just add an iridescent or a mica medium to their existing paints? Oh, I'm glad y'all didn't catch any echo. I didn't turn off the um, the sound on the video. Ah, okay. Well, that would explain why they don't show up super well on black paper then because they're not adding any optical brighteners. Okay, so. This is one of my favorite parts where I get to scratch through. Did that, did that, did this, we did this, we did these. Let's talk about folds. So for the past two weeks, I've been doing fold exercises with you guys. And look, I gotta admit, I realized I didn't know as much as I thought I knew about drawing folds that I've never really put the time in to study them. So during this week, um, during my off time, I put the time in and I've got three, three resources that I used. Is it not going to, yeah, it's not going to let me send it. Awesome. Um, give me a sec. I will send it to Joseph and he will send it to you guys. Oh no, I'm not because I have discords. No discords. Just give me a sec. I don't know why this has so much. Okay, so that's one. That's two, that is a third. And then I've also been using Jack Ham's Drawing the Head and Figure. He's got a lot of really, really good information on drawing folds in this book. Also the famous artist cartoonist course has a lot of great stuff on folds. And I believe Andrew Loomis does as well. And I will eventually get to those books. So what I ended up doing is I ended up copying some of the exercises and the places that, yeah, we're only talking about fabric. And right now I'm mostly just talking about clothing that people wear. 
Um, so last stream, we talked about the different types of folds. So I'm gonna kind of go through them with these examples for you guys. Now, some of these I'd copied from the exercises I just linked. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? And um, a lot of it was also like, as I was doing the exercises, I was thinking about it and trying to internalize it. And some of it was me looking up reference, like um, clothing images and drawing from those. And I still have a lot of work to do with this because I feel like I'm finally coming to kind of an understanding. So we have pipe folds, which seem to be the most common on like skirts or like curtains. So, you know, those, those curvy pipe-ish folds, those would be pipe folds and they tend to be conical. I've also heard them called like um, cone folds and uh, cylindrical folds, things like that. It can also be referred to as tubular folds. So when you look at it from like a cross section view, or if like you're looking down on these right here, they would look like this, like an S curve. And they're typically sewn or gathered. That's how you get kind of the flare out with the skirt. Zigzag folds are ones that I'm really struggling with right now. These are the kind that you typically see in bunch, bunched up foldings, fold, bunched up clothing, like in jeans around a cylindrical shape, like a leg or like an arm. And these are typically in heavier fabrics because heavier fabrics are less likely to roll. So they just kind of compress and bunch up. And these would be considered a type of compression fold. And I plan on scanning all this information and sharing it with my art nerds later on. So I'm just kind of, hey, Max, I'm just kind of going through it quickly. These would be spiral folds. And it's when the fabric is like bunched up, but it does compress. So thinner fabrics like knit fabrics. And it tends to form zigzags. And then you just kind of draw loops going down. And they kind of spiral around the form. So these are really common with cylindrical forms. So these would be examples of combinations of spiral folds and half lock folds, which we're gonna talk about in a minute on the arms. And I definitely need to do more referenced drawings with this because I'm still kind of getting the hang of it myself. I never realized how little attention I paid to folds, which are actually pretty important when drawing characters, I didn't realize how little attention I was paying until I started studying it. And then I was like, okay, let's fix that. So this is a half lock fold. It typically occurs at like the crick of an elbow or the crick of a knee. And it's when the fabric folds over itself. And these are an area I also need to pay more attention to and really study more. They do seem to come to happen in combination with the spiral, fo spiral folds we just talked about as well as sort of um, tension folds, which is just where you have like a point of tension and then the fabric drapes away from it. Whoa, no. Let me pop that back into place real quick. And overlapping folds would be a type of half lock fold. And this is just kind of an expanded view of it. And they tend to occur when um, your surface changes planes. So like when, um, let me see. Okay, so this is, this is like your legs and this is the bottom of your legs and you're sitting. So this would be the tension point and then you would get half lock folds, like you're seeing in my skin, you get half lock folds there at the crick of the knee. They, yeah, there's um, a lot of information about it. Once you kind of know the names and where they commonly occur, it's kind of easy to start being able to Google reference for that. And then emanating creases occur at light tension points and they kind of fan out. So these would be some examples of um, like the tension at the knee and the half lock fold where the fabric overlaps and then some of those um, emanating folds fanning out from there. And then as the fabric kind of pulls away, you get some tension folds there as well. And I think I Googled like person sitting in pants, something like that. <laughs> yeah, it is different. Um, I don't actually know. Um, I've seen 
different artists have different names for them. So I've been kind of just taking notes and trying to organize it, which is why some of these are on tracing paper. I've been inserting them where it's relevant. So we have more emanating folds, like in the crotch of jeans, where you have like that seam and then the fabric pulls away at the seam because that seam is creating tension. And then we have folds that come from like when a person is hunched over, like so their back is creating tension and all the folds occur kind of at the stomach. Then we have the diaper fold, which is just kind of like draped fabric. And it usually has two tension points. So like drapes in a home where they have like a swag hanging down or like a scarf would be considered a diaper pole, uh, fold. And they tend to have a lazy zigzag sort of motion to them. Oh yeah, that's artists we can't get, we can't agree. We can't get our stuff together. We should have a symposium on naming folds. And then drop folds also have kind of that lazy zigzag kind of thing going on. And um, it may include variations of pleats and pipe folds. And then we have moving folds, which are kind of caught in like free fall or in the wind. And I need to do some examples of that. And inert dead and floor folds, which is just like when you drop like a towel or a sheet on the floor and it just kind of bunches up on top of itself. There's no actual tension, but there is a force acting upon it. Gravity is acting upon it. We also have ripple folds, which are a type of spiral fold. They tend to occur at the midsection and they're a compression fold. So like when you're wearing like a knit or a jersey shirt and it kind of bunches up or rolls up on you. It's these sort of folds and they kind of form a spiral around the person's midsection. It'll roll up. Okay. Like a Randy, oh my gosh. And then I have some just kind of general notes. Soft fabric tends to have rounder curves, rounder folds. Stiff fabrics tend to have angular curves. You might have noticed this with like jeans that haven't been broken in yet or canvas. Tight fabric is less likely to crease. Thin fabrics are more likely to crease. So when I say tight fabric, I don't mean like tight, like a tight knit shirt. I mean like spandex is very tight on the body. And um, as long as it's like fitted all the way, like say you're wearing like a full spandex suit for whatever reason, like a superhero suit, there's no way for it to really start rolling or creasing because it's held very taut. Thin fabrics are less likely to, or thick fabrics are less likely to crease and fold. Um, and all folds are either crush folds or tension folds. Tension folds being like when we have a point of tension and the fabric is stretched around it on the underside where the fabric's all kind of built up. The tension can also refer to like um, a pivot point or like an anchor point, like you've hung something and it's draped from there. And crush folds would be like the inside of the knee again, where you're crushing or compressing fabric. And folds emanate from tension points, protrusions and changes in plane. And folds tend to fan out from one single point. So more movement means more folds, more stress. So you're typically going to have folds at like the mid, like any joints basically. So, you know, your midsection, your knees, your ankles, your arms, your, uh, your elbows, your armpits, your wrists, those kind of places. So are wrinkles not considered folds? Wrinkles are still folds. And then the, this is just a study from the Jack Ham book I showed you guys. Um, just trying to kind of internalize the information he's presenting so that I can remember it better. 
yeah, actually, yeah, let me get through this and I'll tell you everything else I did this week. And then I did some half lock folds um, as they occur in like sleeves and in the arms. Some zigzag folds in pants. And this is an area I struggle with, so I'm going to have to do a lot more studies on this. Some pipe folds as they occur in like skirts, dresses, any kind of drapery that hangs loose from like one secured point, like a waistband. No, I haven't yet. I'm kind of working my way through the basic folds and then I'm gonna do different, how different materials look. Yeah, cause like this is one of those rabbit holes where I didn't know that I didn't know anything. And then these are from a Japanese reference that unfortunately I couldn't find. I found it on Pinterest of course, and I could not find the reference but it's just very basic simplifications of how to draw different folds. So I found that useful and that's all I've got. So yeah, I painted, 25 pages. yeah, 25 pages. That's it guys. Well, I'm not done with it yet. Um, there's definitely lots of information. And so I've just kind of been doing these instead of doing figure drawing studies, I've been doing these. And then once I think I have a good understanding of folds, I'm going to start doing clothes figure drawing studies where I'm paying a lot of attention to how the clothes sit on the body. So I'm kind of excited about it because I think it means I'm gonna level up soon as an artist, which is something I'm always excited about. <laughs> it's like a, like a Pareto or they melt into your lap. A per fold, meow fold. What else did I do this week? I painted three carapages. Um, I taught an inking class. I recorded an inking demo. I don't, I wrote a blog post. I mailed packages. I don't know that I've done anything else other than that. All right, so I feel like I have done my due diligence answering the fold question I got three weeks ago. So, um, I'm going to continue studying it in private and then I will scan all the information and make like a PDF or something out of it. So we have very quickly talked about folds. Woo. So with these streams, I like to, when it was from, um, what do you, oh, oh, I recorded that over a year ago and it took. Chris a year to get to it so it's old most of the unfortunately a lot of the stuff that goes live now is older stuff oh yeah I'm gonna put when I finish this full doc I'm gonna put all of that up for my patrons oh thank you I actually really enjoyed it it was um I, I apologize that it took me so long to come up with some answers, but like you, you were here for all three streams. So you kind of know, it was like, let's start drawing it from reference. And then it was like, wait, this is a complicated topic. And, um, I have been collecting the references that I'm using. So I've been sharing them on my Twitter. So if you follow, uh, at Natto soup on Twitter, then as I find references and resources, I will share them. So at the end of streams, or I say the end, but I usually like to kind of go out into the good night doing like a longer form, more complicated thing. So what I'm going to do this evening is I'm just going to ink with a nib, maybe these two pieces and chat with you guys. And I have a feeling people will drift in and out. So I want to take a moment to thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening. I really appreciate it. Please keep the drawing, uh, drawing demonstration suggestions coming. Um, Hunter asked about animal eyes. I have not forgotten that. I wanted to do the fold and then I'm gonna do animal eyes, especially since there's so much variety with animal eyes. Um, usually when I'm drawing animals, unless it's Pancake, the cat, I try to draw them more realistically because I am not super confident in my ability to cartoon animals, if that makes sense with you guys. Like dogs and cats are kind of different because I'm very familiar with them. But when it comes to other types of animals, I usually draw them more realistically. So that's probably where I'm gonna turn my focus. So 
if you want to ink along with me, you are going to need a G nib. I have two penciled illustrations. One of them is on plate Bristol. The other is on Canson XL watercolor paper, so inexpensive watercolor paper. I have here some dinky dips filled with ink. I'm gonna be using this one, which has Dr. P.H. Martin's High Car Black Star in it, which is a waterproof India ink. And I really like it, it dries matte, so it scans really nice. Uh, what else? You're also gonna want a scrap piece of paper, a cup of water, and a paper towel. So I'm gonna take a five minute break, hit the restroom, go gather my materials. I'll probably be back before then, but if you wanna go hit the bathroom yourself or go grab a cup of water, now would be a great time. You weren't an idiot, you were just ambitious. <laughs> Ooh. I 
am using a Tachikawa G nib tonight. In my Tachikawa holder. All Tachi full Kawa tonight. Want to thank Joseph for sponsoring tonight's dinner of Soylent. That way my hands are not shaking as I'm inking. Oh, did I scare, I'm sorry, did I scare you? Did I startle you? Or was it like something else? Well, yeah, I'm gonna have an actual dinner out, out after. My mouth kept, oh, my head is so much in the shot. I am so sorry, that's gross. Let me see if I can. Will you stay? I'm gonna put my glasses on. I can't see. I don't know if they'll help. I mean, that's like, that's basically what we used to do with tablets for a really long time. You get used to there being a disconnect. Of course, if you're using a tablet, you have the benefit of erasing it. I'm not doing this for anything in particular, though, just because I wanted to do it. Um, I would like to. Unfortunately, I don't really know what works well on Bristol other than alcohol marker, but I was kind of thinking about doing like... It is baby Kira! I was thinking about doing... Probably like three. I would also not recommend inking at like 9.30 at night. Try, I would say try to get that earlier in when you're fresher. Oh yeah, right. Like I'm going to do that. When is that going to happen? Let me put it this way. If a publisher was like, we really want more of your tiny people stories, I would do it happily. Because I do actually really like Lilliputian stuff a lot. Oh, I've messed up his cheekbones. I don't know why my paper's skipping up tonight. Hey, good evening. Well, if you want to come adjust it, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, I know. I was rewatching one of my streams and I, I realized that myself, that I need to self-modulate. I got big hair, what can I say? Hey, 
like, you know, Kitsune, it's raining outside. Would that be why my ink's kind of blobby tonight? Yep, just kind of winding it down for this evening. Unless anybody's got any questions or wants to talk about anything in particular. He's always asking, what's the ETA for volume two? So when I teach comics classes, it's always interesting to see who takes to brush and nib inking and who doesn't. And this semester, I don't think anybody is going to be doing brush or nib inking on their finished comics. But um, when I was in Louisiana, I taught a series of three comic classes to like, it was an all ages group, but it was mostly kids and teens. And the teens and kids really took to the nibbing, inking. Like, I thought they would not be into it because it's kind of tedious. But no, they were the ones who really liked it. Oh, in class? Fine liners and brush pens, which is honestly what I would recommend for them because. I would hate for anybody to mess up their blue lines and get discouraged. Like, because a bottle of ink spilled on it or something. And uh, doing it with fine liners means it's more portable, so you can maybe work on it at work if you want to. My cats will also drink ink. Bowie sure has. He's a dum dum. Probably prefer zooming. No, I try not to encourage it since vet bills are pricey. I'm 
using Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star High Carb, which is a waterproof India ink. So I cannot use alcohol markers with this because alcohol markers are a solvent or alcohol like isopropyl ethanol alcohols are a solvent for the shellac in India ink. So it's going to smear it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, well, this is plate, so it doesn't have any tooth. No watercolor, and I would prefer not to use color pencil on plate. Because it doesn't have any tooth to pick up the pigment. Which one smells so good? High carb or are you trying to trick me into smelling my ink so I'll get ink all over my nose? I'm on to you. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't checked it out recently. Why? You want to see me use it next time? Fill out a request form. I'm not being sarcastic. It's just the only way I can actually keep track of stuff. No. Oh, alcohol markers. I used to like the smell too, and I still like working with them, but now I find the smell starts to give me a headache and make me a little woozy after a while. So be careful, those fumes can be toxic. I did, I dipped an Oreo in a watercolor water two nights ago. I didn't eat it, no. I didn't even think about eating it. I was just sad that I was that tired that I would do that. That's why Starbucks cups have lids, because me or my cats will knock it over. Her parents did not encourage her to be any particular way.
Although she was a daddy's girl when she was little, like in that she always wanted to spend time with him and he was definitely more patient with her then. Yeah, any Yeah. Uh probably she doesn't have any patience for sewing. What am I doing? Eyesight's terrible, so. And I'm wearing my glasses too. I apologize, my head keeps getting in the shot because I keep leaning forward to see what I'm doing. Don't ever, don't ever lose your eyesight. You know what? You, I mean, I've always, not always, but since sixth grade, I've had poor eyesight. Um, but you know what really made it bad? Nope, Guild Wars in the dark. So staring at a bright laptop screen in the dark. And I'm sure looking at my cell phone in the dark is not good for me either. Why? Mm, well, I swear. I think my eyesight's more precious than that. I'm not making enough money to kill my eyesight. Although I think I probably am anyway. Oh no! No! Cadmium's bad for you. Maybe, maybe you've gotten it all out of your system. All that cadmium. It can be helpful. Just a bit muddy. Delicious cadmium. Almost like Fanta. It does have a bunch of flavors in Germany. I don't think so. Yellow font is pineapple, right? So you were probably thinking it was going to taste like delicious pineapple soda.
does not taste like real orange, though. Or even Fanta orange. Well, you've got more Fanta flavors than the U.S. does. Oh, thank you. Uh, I redrew it today, and I was trying to put in what I'd learned, so, yes. Hmm? Those would just be, like, gathered kind of folds. Like, puffy folds. Well, I haven't gotten to that yet. But these would be spiral folds, and this is a half lock. Wow, you just happen to pick really well. Uh, thank you, Kurtz. I cannot tell you the answer to that. I wish I knew. I mean, you're not kidding, Hunter. So at cons, one of the things I do now, and I'm a little embarrassed to do it, is I offer people a free sticker if they can show me they've subscribed. And some people, it's like, it's like they think it's a bad deal. Like they don't, <laughs> they have to go through all my stickers first to find a sticker they really want before they'll subscribe. Yeah, these are all people who are like, I wish I knew how to watercolor or I wish I knew how to draw. I'm not just like soliciting randos. These are people who are already looking at my art at a table. So they seem interested. Maybe the answer is I joined YouTube too late and I don't have the right kind of personality. They get a sticker. I would, I'm happy if they sub on the spot. Hey lab accident, glad you can make it. How was work today? Cause like the whole, my whole, all I'm trying to do is if someone wants to learn how to draw and they're looking for resources, I want to be able to put that in front of them. Yeah, I know. And I see that and like, you're not the first person to suggest that. One of my other friends has, has offered to, to do uh, fake drama with me. But you know, I don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. Yeah, I would rather just focus on trying to teach people how to do what, like, share what I know how to do with other people. 
so they can find what they're looking for. I don't really want to start stuff with other artists. I'll pick fight with companies. Yeah, I think it, honestly, I think it's shameful. Like, it's like being in high school again. Um, anytime I see videos that have, like, you know, you can tell that that's that kind of video because they brag about it in the title. I just mark it as, like, not interested. And let's see, shorthanded, one of the, wow, got for stealing. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm sorry you had to deal with it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I mean, I'm not a chill person. I, I have no problem with chill people. I'm not a chill person. I am like very hyperactive. But don't have energy for dumb drama over dumb things that no one actually cares about. I know it's human nature to be interested in that kind of stuff. Just like it's human nature to look at a, a car accident as you go by. But I also can't help but think, how is that going to, like, for people who are career artists or want to be career artists or want any kind of a career, how is that going to reflect? But then I also think about how with influencers, that kind of behavior is basically rewarded now. So I wish I could say... It's like, you know, it'll... That kind of behavior will get punished in it at some point, but that doesn't seem to be the case. It's still not behavior I want to engage in, and I don't want to encourage it. Thank you! You say that, Joseph, but that, I'm not going to go into it on stream, but that's not true. Yeah, all over YouTube. I'm not joking. It is the fastest way to build a subscriber base, is to have some dumb petty beef with somebody who's more popular than you because then they're gonna like call you out on their channel and show your art on their channel so Ooh, i no i'd have to go i mean it would because people are gonna click to see if it's true and then you're also inviting like a you're inviting a lot of criticism when you make those kind of claims but you're also it's it's like uh, challenging the other artists to like come back and prove you wrong, basically. I mean, it's a rivalry. How do I draw lightly on paper? I have a hard time drawing lightly too. So I have a couple of different tricks that I like to employ. Um, this, I'm gonna, pull it up to the camera so you can see. I actually printed my blue lines out. So I drew this, I scanned it, and then I printed it out very faintly with my printer. Then I penciled over it using a harder lead, like an HB or an H lead. And that kind of helps with how much I push down. Yeah, holding high up on the pencil or holding the pencil like in a sketchy kind of fashion, you know what I mean? rather than like this and where you can bear down. But that's not how I draw. <laughs> it's just how I've been told to draw and I've never done it. But also using colored leads, like um, this pencil that I'm about to show you, this pencil has red lead in it, for example, and it can only go so dark before it just snaps. Yeah, yellow, orange, light blue, pink are all good leads. Joseph, can you drop in a link um, from Amazon for color, you know, leads and the Pentel red leads, please? With a Color you know. Oh my 
gosh, thank you. I, I really enjoy getting to do this. Um, for years, I've had an art blog and um, I've always tried to share good information there, but it's never done well. It's never really taken off. People don't talk about it. So I really appreciate having this kind of an opportunity to, to hang out with you guys and share what I know and learn from y'all as well. Oh my gosh, that's such a nice endorsement. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> no, it's it's not. Um, if you put if you put good information out there for free, people assume it's not good information. They want to know what's wrong with it. So if you guys don't mind, I would appreciate it if you drop by here because I have a decade worth of drawing tutorials, comic tutorials, inking tutorials, watercolor tutorials over there. Joseph, would you drop links for the uh, Intro to, to Comic Craft series hub page and the Watercolor Basics hub page from my blog? And then I also um, do a lot. Oh yeah, cola erase pencils are great. And Mitsubishi, ha, Mitsubishi, my mistake, has these art erase. Sorry, Art Erase color pencils, which I like these a lot. I have them in dark colors because a friend of them of mine sent me to them, sent them to me. But look, look at that. Look, how clean, com like compared to how dark that was, how clean did that erase? And it's available in like 36 colors. And I used to be one of the uh, co I was I am a co-founder and I used to co-run, which is all about doing conventions. And there's still loads of really good information available here. I'll leave the art race up so you guys can look it up. Actually, Joseph, would you drop an Amazon link to Mitsubishi art race, please? Thank you. They're okay. I would like to try more erasable color pencils since people do ask. So that's, it's nice to get a lead so I don't have to like buy them and then hate them because Crayola makes erasable color pencils and those things are awful, y'all. It's art erase color. I found them before so I can, oh, I like how I'm holding the pencil in front of what I thought was the camera and is not the camera because I am so smart. And it's by Uni. So when I first, um, when I got into SCAD, I kind of made a promise that I would record my experiences there and share as much as I could with other people. And that was uh, kind of like a promise with a higher power. Like, if you give me this, I will do everything I can to pay it forward and make it accessible to other people. So um, I, that's kind of the legacy I would like to leave is I would like to be remembered as like a kind comic artist who helped others. Like, I think about like oak trees and stuff and how they, they put out all these acorns so all these other oak trees can grow from a single oak tree that kind of thing you know and how their leaves when their leaves fall it nourishes the acorns and how they protect them from the harsh rains so that's sort of the legacy I want to leave with comics I give me a minute I'll I'll drop a link so that's why I do all of all of this my favorite mechanical pencil um, hmm, that's a good question. So I'm currently using a Pintel Icy. And it's a fairly inexpensive plastic bodied mechanical pencil because I came to the realization that using those metal drafting pencils is really hard on my hand. It makes my arthritis really bad because they don't have any give. I would rather break a plastic pencil than break my hand. So I've been trying out different, um, very affordable, lightweight mechanical pencils for sketching and drawing, that sort of thing. And these have been much easier on my hand than the metal ones. But the Color Eno mechanical pencils, 
and of course I would not have any of them near me, of course, when I want them. The Color Eno mechanical pencils are actually not bad mechanical pencils. Um, I've had the same set of seven for like three or four years now, and I've had the same light blue one forever. Um, these are, they're fine. Like they have a little bit of a cushion grip. They are lightweight. They have a little bit of give. They're more likely to break than you're going to break your hand, if that makes sense. I don't ever use the erasers on these because, you know, they go so fast. So, um, I'm looking around for my pencil case. Oh, it's, there it is. Give me one second. And I also want to get caught up on the chat. Okay, so we talked about the color Eno. These are very affordable. I like them just fine. We talked about the Icy. You can get these at Walmart. They're very affordable as well. I also really like the Dr. Grip pencils. If you use 0.3 or 0.5, you're gonna find a lot more options available with Dr. Grip. These are made by Pilot. They have a really cushy, almost gel grip. And I really like them. My only problem is they're a little bit large for my hand. So I have a Goldilocks problem where I don't want a pencil that's too small or too large. But these have a really nice grip. Your options for 0.7 are a little bit more limited. Make sure you type in mechanical pencil when you search for these because otherwise it's going to bring up a million gel pins. And then finally, I have a Pentel Graph Gear 1000. I've had this thing for about 10 years. It is a beast. Um, it has a stod like um, a jelly sort of pencil grip on it because it will eat your hand up. And give me a sec because I do want to get caught up on the chat. Faber Castell ones are the red lines. So, oh yeah. Yeah, and if they erase well, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, yes. Ink Drop Cafe is the webcomic collective that I am part of. And we have lots of great member comics. They're all free to read because they're all web comics. You can check them out at the link Kino Kitsune posted at inkdropcafe.com. We also have a Discord channel, which is a very friendly, welcoming, encouraging place. We have a lot of comic artists who are not members of Inkdrop Cafe who participate in our chats, and they all seem like wonderful people. So if you're ever looking for kind of a comic community to belong to, that is a great place to start. And if you do decide to join Inkdrop, just give me a shout out so I know you've joined because I can't always <laughs> tell who's who when people change their names. Yes, they still make icy pencils. The one, this one here is neat because it has like, like a thin kind of grip to it. So it's actually, it's not um, like a solid piece of rubber. It's like a, a ribbed piece of rubber, but there are other icy models. So they make various icy models. There are other icy models that have different grips on them. And uh, Pilot also makes the G2 mechanical pencils, which are the same as the Color Eno, just different color. Um, and they come with graphite lead inside of them instead of instead of colored lead. The 500 is good. So before I got the 1000, I had a 500 all through undergrad and it was good, but then I used it to death. And when it died, it died forever. <laughs> I'm, ah. Railroading. I might still have it somewhere at my desk because I used to carry it around as like my good luck charm. Maybe that's why my channel hasn't grown because I don't carry my good luck charm with me anymore. On that note though, people 
talk about starting their own channel pretty frequently, like on Twitter and on in our Ink Drop Discord and and things like that. And uh, they often I used to kind of caution them, like, you know, don't expect catastrophic growth. It can be kind of expensive. It can be hard to build up a following. You know what I mean? And it was just like kind of blew me off. Like, well, your art's garbage. So that's why you don't do very well. That kind of an attitude. Um, so I kind of just kind of keep my advice to myself. But if you think you're going to enjoy it regardless, if you like helping other people, if you like connecting with other people, then it's still a worthwhile endeavor. It's just not a money-making endeavor. Money-making and worthwhile are not always the same. Ah, don't like how I'm pulling that line. I was going to like try to do this without making any corrections. I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think I will... Ah, oh, what is wrong with me? Inking poorly tonight. Actually, I know why. It's because it's the end of the day and I never do my best inking when I'm tired. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do, especially because I do kidlet stuff and middle grade stuff. I really don't want kids Googling my name and it's like garbage, you know, like just picking fights with people and saying awful things about people and just being a source of negativity and pain. I don't want that to be how people remember me. Because, like, there's probably a good chance I'll never be famous. That's fine. That's whatever. There's probably a good chance I'll never be professionally published. Which breaks my heart because it's one of my big goals. But I can at least control, like, the detritus I leave behind, if that makes sense. Like, the paper trail of who I am. I can control that. And I can try to make it a good thing. I mean, I do get salty on Twitter sometimes but not at other artists I try not to more at concepts which I think that's fine like I think it's fine to be mad at the comic industry because it's not a good place to be and it doesn't take care of its own and it's fine to be angry at like some of the sexual harassment problems that come up in our industry or that happen at shows and nothing's done about it. Like it's important to be angry about those things. So they'll change. And it's good to be angry at shows that don't protect their young attendees and like sexual predators prey upon them. Like you should be mad about that. Or on a lesser, more petty note, art supply companies who promise X, Y, and Z and they don't deliver on those promises or they're charging too much. Like, those are all fine things to be upset about because, you know, those are companies and those are businesses and those are groups that have lawyers and have protection and that prey upon other people or are reliant on our money to stay afloat. So it's different, I think, to point out those problems but I'm not ever going to go after another artist. Well, I don't intend on ever going after another artist. <laughs> oh, oh, with the, um, okay, so yeah. It does click in the tip. It's also all metal, whereas the 500 is resin and metal. And when I say my other one broke, I mean it like catastrophically jammed. And I was used to taking it apart, washing it, clearing out jams, clearing out built up graphite. When it died, it died for good. Um, the other thing about this is it has like a lead indicator that you can change, but you know, 
if you like the 500, go with the 500. What I would honestly advise is don't buy metal drafting pencils. They look cool. They look legit. People treat me like I'm more of an artist when I'm using these in public, but they've wrecked my hands. They're the reason I have arthritis. Use pencils that are more ergonomic, that are going to be kinder on your hand, because if the pencil breaks, it's better than breaking your hand. It's cheaper to go buy a $5, a $2 pencil than it is to have hand problems for the rest of your life. I think YouTube as a hobby can be a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoy it as a hobby for sure. Streaming is a lot of fun. It's a good opportunity to talk to people, which I like doing. Um, I know not everybody, some people who stream don't like, don't want to have to talk during their stream. And that's fine too. I am a chatty person. <laughs> I get very lonely. So this is a good outlet for me because it means I can talk to people more. Five minute crafts, man. So many people have been ragging on TikTok and five minute crafts lately. Like it's, it, yeah, I'm not a fan of either of those. I try to pretend they don't exist. And then Instagram loves that kind of like quick bite-sized content. People love that kind of quick bite-sized concept content. I think it's because they're not interested in learning how to make something of their own. It's like an aspirational artist. You know, they aspire to make art, so they collect all the things that make them feel more arty, but they never put the time in to do it. It's like they want people to perceive them as an artist, but they don't want to be Yes, 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 that, yes, that, that. Like, also, like, and I'm going to rail on Insta for a minute, like, a lot of the popular art channels or art people, um, and I don't mean, like, good artists, I mean, like, they're just, they're popular. The art supplies they're showing, it's like there's Crayolas in the shop, but you know they didn't paint it with Crayolas. Drive safe or ride safe lab accident. Make sure you pay attention to your surroundings. Turn off the stream for a while so you can get home safely. How do you feel about the trees and the sea lining up in Terrace Farm? Gosh dang it! What? I hate you! So this is a tangent and that's a no-no. Don't do that. Someone should have pointed that out before I inked it. I clearly have strong negative feelings about that mistake. That is a tangent that shouldn't happen. So it basically makes it look like the arm on her, the line on her arm is just going into infinity. I was literally thinking the same thing. See, we've been together too long. I mean, let's try it. That's what these streams are for. That's if I color it, because I was kind of thinking about correcting this down here. And if I correct this, I can't color it. But it's also, it's annoying and it's ugly, but it's not the biggest mistake. And once I color it, it may not even be a mistake anybody notices. That came up a lot during class. Uh, yesterday I did an inking class and they were asking about like when do you correct your mistakes and that's always a complicated question because it's like well if I'm leaving it in black and white then I let it cure for an hour I erase the graphite and then I do corrections but if I'm gonna do color I do the color first and then I try to do corrections you make the outline super thick yeah that also yeah that would also help to kind of like break it up between the arm. Yeah, that's the, I don't, I will always point out my errors to you guys in case you guys can learn from them. But like in general, I try not to point out my mistakes because people might not notice. And that's what they tell you if you're doing like a pitch or a portfolio review or like someone comes up to your table is don't ever, don't ever sell yourself out. That's like selling yourself out, you know, when you point out all the errors in your work. And sometimes that comes way too quickly. Like, you know, if 
I was at Handmaid and Bound, which is a um, book show here, a book arts show here in Nashville. And the woman next to me was running a print demo with like a traditional printer. And after the show, she comes up and she's like, so I heard you went to SCAD. What were your experience with that? But she asked in like a fishing kind of way. And it was like, oh, it was okay. I mean, I will, if someone who's interested in going asks me, I will give them a different kind of an answer, but I don't, I don't know her. So I wasn't going to go into it too much. And it was like, oh, I've heard a lot of really bad things about SCAD. And it's just like, oh, okay. Cause she teaches at this other school. It's like, an art school in the Blue Ridge Mountains area. So like she's, yes, she wanted to gossip with me at my expense because it was, and then she starts like critiquing my art and is basically like, you know, you should be able to earn a living with an MFA. Have you ever thought of going into marketing? And it's just like, or advertising. And it's like, well, if um, somebody approached me with a job already, I wouldn't say no to a job, but I don't want to like three 180 my life around. But she was definitely, and then she started critiquing my art. Like, well, if you didn't have this comic style, you'd be more hireable. And it's like, I went to school for comics. Comics is what I care about. At your table was comics. I, my whole table was comics and comic inspired art. So like she was definitely out of line for saying that, I think, because I didn't I didn't ask her and I kept trying to change the subject to anything else. And she kept bringing it back. Yeah, same. Leave them in or start over. you say she was well-meaning i will tell you something i think about it like an old cat like she could sense weakness in this young cat and she felt bad because my table was getting more people during the day than hers was like i could tell she had some aggression that she wanted to kind of take out and i was gonna be me and she wasn't taking my like in the conversation cues which was the real problem in my opinion is that I was giving her cues that I didn't want to continue the conversation. And then she tried to bring in the woman she was tabling with. Like she tried to get that woman to come critique my stuff. Like this was an unsolicited, unasked for critique. While I was trying to pick up my stuff. Ooh. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to help you stay up and get home safely and I'm glad you're home safely. is the people who want to start stuff on Twitter are like the eggs with no followers. That's usually the people who leave really rude comments on my uh, YouTube have like no videos of their own. And like as a comic artist, I definitely get a lot of if you just didn't have that comic art style, that manga style, you'd be so much more hireable. Oh no, she wasn't looking to hire me. Well, if you're gonna leave a nasty comment, I think you should stand behind it with your own account. Otherwise, why would I take you seriously? You're just a rando. I definitely do take critiques that I have solicited seriously. Oh, I'm trying to do this on watercolor paper and I am regretting it. It's not nice watercolor paper, it's Canton XL. So it's not like I'm like fighting with um, cotton rag fibers. Ooh. I remember 
when you showed me that, you know, Kitsune, it's like, that is out of line. People get too familiar sometimes. So I think there's enough real life drama. I'm not gonna go start in any YouTube drama. Sorry, Kino Kitsune, I know you've had beef with me for years. Well, the thing is it might be our table because we both put in to SPX with the intention of splitting. I think it'd be funnier if that was the reveal that like the other half of the table was her stuff. So it all went wild. or my stuff, you know, I'm not saying you should actually do it. Well, yeah, because they'd have to face the consequences of having said something like that. And they'll say it in DMs or they'll like make up a, a new account to say it like that doesn't Whatever. It still makes you a horrible person for saying it. Yeah. That's true. I would definitely say them saying that to you, Kino Kitsune, was out of line. to you that sounds I know you were in high school so you didn't really ah okay in the US it's um, starting to become people are trying not to use it as much Jeez, I'm so sorry. She should not have done that to you. I've had so many art teachers who did not like how I drew at all, but instead of like helping me improve by like pointing out resources I could use to improve my anatomy or improve how I draw clothing or how I draw hair, they just, it was just like, just completely draw in a different style. Like they weren't, they didn't think I was worth the time to like actually help me develop as an artist. The complete artist kit? How much is the complete artist kit? Can um can you elaborate on that please? So something I have noticed trying to become an art teacher is that a lot of art teachers are not artists and don't have an art background and we're not required to take any art classes. A 
like particularly at the high school level in Nashville, for example, the one in Walmart. Um, I don't know how much the complete artist kit at Walmart is. I'm, I'm sorry. If you can give me a link, I might be able to give you some more information. Nice. Oh, awesome. That's not, that's good to hear, Hima. I know that was like a concern. Yeah, I have so much more respect for art teachers who like, even if the way you draw isn't how they would draw, they still respect like the time and energy you're putting in and will help you develop. Because some art teachers are not very good, nice people and shouldn't be teaching art. And I say that as someone who teaches art, like I have definitely seen a fair share of teachers who should not have been teaching the subject they were teaching because they're not, they don't have the actual knowledge to teach it. They might have like the paper qualifications, but they don't, if they don't keep a sketchbook or make any sort of art, pottery, ceramics, anything like that, then maybe they shouldn't be grading other people's art. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. Mm, that's weird that she would rather have. So I think what she was trying to do was get y'all to do master studies. But did she explain why y'all should do them? Or what's useful about them? Because master studies can be very useful. But just having you guys copy them sounds like busy work. Yeah, that's the one I remember you being concerned about. I'm really glad. I remember looking at his stuff when you sent it and thinking he reminded me of uh, David Duncan at SCAD, who I actually really liked. He was a great teacher. So I was hoping you would have a similar experience. So I'm glad to hear that he's actually a cool person. Comics would die out if we only encourage people to do what we're doing. What? How did that happen? All the students. What on earth? I'm really sorry to hear that lab accident. And just because you have the knowledge doesn't mean you should be teaching either. I think it's probably a fine line between having the knowledge and the experience and liking people and wanting them to succeed. And that's what I think about for my students. I just want, okay, cool. Good luck, Nord. Thank you so much for helping them, Lindsay. I appreciate it. I just want the students in my classes to succeed and I just want to do whatever it takes within reason to help them succeed. Mountain house all class. I want a mountain house. Oh, cool, fiber arts. Ooh. 
have online classes though, like um, online lessons that are available. If you check out my intro to comic craft series here on YouTube, that should be a good place to start. Joseph, would you drop a link? Thank you. Hmm? Oh, cool. Intro to Comic Craft. Where you can get real classes? Um, I do. I get an Amazon fee and I should disclose that. So um, when I link things from Amazon, I do see a small uh, bounty from that. It doesn't cost you any extra that it comes out of Amazon's in. And do I have one where you can get real classes? I'd like to offer real classes online at some point in the future. I just need to get all of that together and create more exercises for people. So hopefully soon. And cool, Lindsay. What are you going to Nashville for? Actually, oh yes, okay. I do. <laughs> However, um, if I think if I think Amazon's price is just ridiculously not fair or competitive, I will usually just link Blick or something. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome, Nor. Would you guys be interested in a stream where um, we all kind of, people submit their art or they submit their links and we all just kind of look at it and appreciate it? like a mutual appreciation society stream. Um, well, if people ask for critiques of their work, then critiques, but otherwise no unsolicited critiques. Okay, awesome. Um, I was sort of thinking like the first weekend of the month we could start that. So maybe the, um, not, let me look at my calendar really quick. Yeah, it is coming up. So maybe next Friday, that's what we could do. Should I create a separate form for that? Or do you guys, can y'all just submit it through that one and just let me know like, hey, I'm just submitting my portfolio for the, you know, portfolio or comic or my favorite pieces of art. Like you could even just make a Google doc and drop like three or four of your favorite pieces. Nice. Oh, I don't want to beat anybody, but if I can think of um, useful, helpful things to say, I'll definitely do that. And I also like being able, if I know of a resource that will help somebody or can answer some questions, I love being able to share those. So I will make a new, or can you make a form, Joseph? Um, it should have a link for where the art they want to share, um, a field for criticism. It can be just a yes, no field and maybe like a comments box and then, um, a field where they can like link their Instagram or something and that way people can find more of their art. Does that all sound like like useful things? <coughs> Don't fill the request form out yet, Joseph's making a new form. 
That way I don't get confused. And then um, a field where they can put in their social media platform of choice where people can see more of their work. And then um, maybe the day after I can share, um, if you guys are cool with it, share your the social media links that you've shared with me on my Twitter and hopefully you can find some more people. If you're not comfortable with that, just let me know. Well, lab accident, you could just post, um, you could just submit your Instagram and we can look at that. So if people have like um, specific pieces they want to share. Yeah, you can link a pin, you can link me your Pinterest, that would work. I, I do ask that all work be all ages appropriate or safe for work since this is a all ages friendly channel. Don't want anybody getting in trouble. And if you have a comic to promote, you should definitely include a link to that. I love being able to link. Uh, how do you link something? You can go at, well, um, for right now, you can go ahead and drop the URL into the chat and we'll approve it. I've, I'm actually following your Insta, I think. Have a good evening, Hunter. Sleep well yourself. So earlier in this video, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Kurtz. I'm laughing because um, that was something we talked about earlier in this video. So after this stream is over, I would rewatch it if I were you, and you'll be able to see me kind of explain the basic folds. And if you think it would be helpful, I can also do a standalone video where I go over that that isn't a stream. And I also shared some resources that I used to learn how to draw folds earlier in the chat. Ah, perfect. Thank you, Joseph. Do you want me to grab yours and share it for you, Lab Accident? Okay, no problem, Kurtz. Have a good evening. How do 
I organize my reference? I, oh my, I have not organized my reference. Joseph organized my reference and I'm very grateful for it. Would you answer that question since you're the one who organized it? You can also, if you're dealing with um, digital things, like just collections of images, you, I, no, 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 not at all. I had to link it, can, I can tell, yeah, give me your Instagram name and I will add you on Instagram, if you're okay with that. Actually, um, if any of you guys have Instagrams, go ahead and drop the handle um, and I'll put mine in here as well. And I'd love to follow you. That's mine. So if you would format it like that, where you put the at sign and then your name, like your Instagram name, that would be perfect. No, you're not interrupting me at all. I'm glad for the company. Yeah, yeah, please share it. And just a reminder for any of you guys who are new, I do these streams every week. Um, they are usually on Fridays. Sometimes I will move it over to Saturday. And you can check my community tag on, uh, on YouTube because I will always let you guys know if I have to change it. And I love it when you guys ask me questions. And uh, I love it when you guys share your own art. So please do that. I am encouraging you to do it. It makes me really happy. Oh, that's why you haven't been posting. I thought you were just busy with school. And generally, we try to keep this a in an encouraging environment. So I encourage y'all to draw along or work on your own comics or own projects while I'm drawing. That makes me really happy. Like we're all working together. Oh, I'm so sorry, Ema. Are you taking commissions at least? Can I commission you to draw Naomi? All right, I will do that. I guess it's through coffee. I'll do that when I finish the stream tonight. Unless you would prefer it through PayPal. I can do it through PayPal too. Whatever works.
I am using a G nib dip pin nib in a Tachikawa holder. So it's kind of my favorite combination. How long is the stream going to be? I'm almost done. Um, normally the stream doesn't run this long, I want to say, but since I started inking, um, I kind of was just like, I'll just fit in the stream when I'm finished inking this piece. So probably 20 more minutes. Is that too short? I have lots of videos you can watch that'll keep you company. I have watercolor videos and Copic marker videos and inking videos. Oh, sorry. Um, let me, I'll write it for you. And that'll make it a little easier. always be back next week. No problem. Although next week we're going to be looking at y'all's art. you were in Galveston lab accident I'm from I'm from Louisiana so I've been to Galveston I actually went for a cousin's wedding my favorite color mm, I like um I like all the colors I like pastels and uh sort of like lighter colors like that so anything pretty like that I don't actually own a lot of purple stuff so purple would be good would I say the Tachikawa Genib is better than the deleter one um, not, no, not necessarily. I have more of the Tachikawa ones and I feel like they have a little more flexibility and you can't see it on this one cause it's coated in ink, but it has like these little ribs on it, which help it hold on to ink better. I think it's got a lot more flexibility to it. So for me, cause you know, I'm heavy handed. I push down a lot. I think it's a better one for me. Really? Lafayette? Do I ever go to see other people? Hmm. <laughs> um, that's, that's an interesting question. That's a, kind of a mixed question. So I'm actually a pretty social person. I like being around people. I'm an ambivert. But I don't have a lot of friends in Nashville. I have a few, but I'm, you know, I don't have like a big friend group here. I kind of wish I did. Um, so like my preference would be to go hang out with friends every Saturday or so, but that's not necessarily my reality. Who? Oh, wait, who? Oh, Kino Kitsune? Yeah, I'd like to visit Kino Kitsune. They live far away from me though. So we're trying to plan a show where both of us can be there. And uh, I actually go to California somewhat frequently. I have another friend who lives over there. And I do a lot of cons, like conventions, anime conventions. So I travel a lot, but I don't necessarily get to hang out and socialize a whole lot, if that makes sense. Like I'm usually doing it for work stuff. I knew Becca Dinoff in person. Yeah, a lot of my friends are online people that I then meet at conventions and we become friend friends. Not that they're not that online friends aren't friend friends, but you know, like eat dinner together friends.
but when I was younger, like in high school, I used to go out on dates every Saturday, every Friday night. And then on Saturday, we would all go play video games at someone's house. And then on Tuesdays, we'd all play D&D. So I used to be very social. And uh, I just don't live near a lot of people that I know. That's cool. Regarding the antique nibs. I know that fountain pen people say that older nibs are like higher quality. They're better made because they, um, there was more demand for them and more people knew how to use them. So, you know, you had to kind of keep your standards up. There was more equipment available for it. Have I ever meet one of my friends? Yeah, I met my friend Omi. Um, we met first at Comic Con, and then we've done a few other shows together. That's right, Hima and I know each other. I'm really hoping I get into A2 Calf again this year because I'm hoping to see you again. I always think of you as like one of my comic children. I hope that's okay. Have I ever met one of my fans? Probably. Um, so I, it gets kind of weird because I usually start thinking of my fans as my friends. Like we usually become friendly. So by the time I meet someone who maybe started out as a fan of my work, we're probably friends at that point. Oh, cool. You're old school lab accident. Have you tried inking with a fountain pen by any chance? I've been so, Kima, you, you were already an impressive artist when we met, but it's been a real joy watching you level up. I hope you're tabling this year. Did you put in? Oh, cool. Yeah, like you can buy like box sets of them, Lab Accident, right? Okay, so these need to dry and I'm gonna let them dry for an hour before I erase them. I'm not gonna hold you guys hostage that long, I promise. But I would recommend if you're inking something, I would recommend you let it dry, cure, adhere to the paper for at least an hour um, before you erase it. I usually like to let it kind of cure overnight so 24 hours is a good time frame for that. This one was done on plate Bristol, which doesn't take watercolor very well. This one was done on inexpensive watercolor paper, so I'm probably going to watercolor on top of it. Yes, I hope you get in, Hema. Sorry. <laughs> Waterproof, ah, fair enough, fair enough. I can recommend some, um, when you are in the, on the market though for, uh, waterproof fountain pen ink. Who told you that? I mean, so, so I like the Noodlers pens for inking. They have, actually, I don't have any inked up right now, but I can still show you anyway. And I've inked a few pieces with Noodlers. So let's see, this is a Noodlers Ahab. And you can see it's got kind of a cloven nib. It's split down the middle. And inside is a piston. So it's a piston filled fountain pen. So you depress the piston and then you pull it up to fill it with ink. Awesome. Yeah, definitely can do that. And then there's the Conrad, very similar. The nib is the same, same size. 
Um, this one has like the body is the piston. What am I doing? It's been so long since I've used this pen that I am having trouble getting it to depress. So give me a moment. Oh, okay. So what I need to do is I need to remove this little lid. There we go. And it has, I will refit it so you guys can see. Once you remove that little top, you can use this to depress the plunger and then you can fill it up with things. So this one holds a lot more ink, but it evaporates quicker, I think. And then finally, we have the little noodler's, uh, gosh, it's the little one. What is its name though? Ah, <sighs> my brain is gone. Anyway, this is the one I started out with. It has the smallest nib. All of these have a decent amount of flex. They're not gonna be as flexy as a dip pin nib, but that can be good if you're heavy handed and you have like control issues because they're gonna kind of control the amount of ink. Oh, you have a sassy Ahab? These have all been good to me thus far. They are fun. Oh, that's cute. Sailor makes good pens too. No, all of these were about $20. I haven't tried any of the zebra fountain pens. That's water, that's where I was gonna go. So you want to look for pigment based inks. Platinum makes several different colors. This is their black, so it's a really good kind of standard pigment based ink. Um, Sailor makes Storia inks, which are beautifully colored uh, pigment inks, which I really like. Let me grab some links. Did you finish making the form for people to submit? Would you, oh, you did, okay. And I'm just pulling up links for you guys. Okay, that first one is for carbon black. I think they make three or four colors. It's like platinum rose. Oh, that is not what I wanted. Um, those ink. There we go, found it. The one I'm going to drop in next, I haven't used Noodlers Massachusetts. I have the, what is it? Um, Navajo Turquoise, Apache Sunset, Habernero. I have their Big Black Snake, which is supposed to be waterproof. Um, Goulet pins also sell samples of these. So I would recommend you order a sample through Goulet first. And I've tested the ones I'm linking. I have tested all of these and I've tested them with watercolor. So I like them. They're very waterproof. And then Sailor Storia. Sailor Story is really cool because it comes in like 16 different pigment colors. So they're all waterproof. I have not reviewed all of them yet though. I have done Bottle Green. I've done Night Blue. I've done Lion Brown, which I actually really like. I've done Magic Purple. And I've done Dancer, which is their hot pink. No, I didn't. I didn't buy a set of them. I wish I bought a set of them because I love them. 
but I don't use them often enough right now. And you can also use them with a dip pen. You don't have to use them with a fountain pen. Yes, but you do not put that in your fountain pen. You will ruin your fountain pen. But FW makes little like markers for those now. I can show you guys those in another stream. Because I have some. I just haven't gotten around to reviewing them yet. Can I watercolor a drawing? Um, so next stream we're going to do, we're going to take a look at everybody's art and we're going to compliment each other. It's going to be a mutual appreciation society. If people want a critique, they can request a critique. So that's what we're going to do next week. But I can definitely do a stream where I do a live watercolor demonstration of a drawing. Do me a favor and take a moment to fill out this form. Oh, did you post the form already? Okay. The form I'm going to link is a request form. And that's just so that I can keep track of um, what people have asked. Yes. Yes, lab accident. Correct. And you can use um, rubbing alcohol will dissolve acrylic. What? I should be drinking water all the time. But next, not next week, but the week after? Yeah, really. Um, that's why you can't, like, if you ink with your acrylic inks, I wouldn't use alcohol markers on top of them because they're going to dissolve the ink that you use and they're going to make it smear all over the place. The only ink, like, the only liquid ink I know of that is alcohol marker safe is a brand called Kaime Soul K. And the only people I know who sell it are jet pens, unfortunately. So that's the only liquid ink I know of that is going to be, although you know what, I've never tried my platinum black ink with alcohol markers. No, wait, I need to fill the, so this has like a little reservoir inside that helps you fill your pen, but you need to fill the reservoir first. The only reason I ask that people put their email addresses is so I can keep track of who's submitting what. You can put in a bogus email address if you want to. I'm not going to contact you or anything. Ah, oh, you know what? I bet there are like, what is it? Deleter number four. So this is already starting to, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's bleeding out really badly, but this is also just cartridge paper, like cardstock. So that could also be why. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to try some alcohol marker out on it. My what? Heat gun? My <laughs> hair dryer? No, no, it doesn't take any money. It's just so I can keep track of who asked for me to draw what. It's completely free. In fact, I like it when you guys fill out requests because it creates a history of like, people asking me to show them how to do things and me showing people how to do things. If that makes sense. Like there's um, give and take, interaction. Not, not, not smarting tonight. Huh? Well, I talked about that earlier. Okay, so that's very wet right now. It may have also had too much water from me cleaning off my nib. So many variables. Cool, all right. That's good to know. I would rather use the leader than have to order through jet pens. 
of makes sense too because they make their own alcohol markers, the Neopico markers. So it makes sense that they would do a lot of inks that can handle it. I know like only one of their inks is waterproof and I think I have that one. <laughs> oh. What does the link to your record? So um, I do character sketches. So if you have like an original character that you'd like me to draw, you would put a link to art of your character there. So like if you have it up on like your Pinterest, you would link that particular Pinterest page so that I could see your character so I could draw them. So earlier in the stream, I did, um, I'm gonna grab it and show you. I did three sketch requests for people. So these are their characters. So this is Nisa's beautiful butterfly boy, Rui. This is Drew's adorable Lunella. And I'm not sure, is it showing up correctly? Okay. And then this is Kino Kitsune's adorable character, Fox. And I drew him, it's a little cut off. And I drew him relaxing in a cup of tea. So that's why I asked for the link. So I know what the character looks like so I can draw them. But if you're just asking me to draw, like um, do a tutorial on X or do a watercolor piece, you don't have to include any of that information. I just use the same. Oh, no problem. I just use the same form for both. Okay, I think I think I am um, this is still wet. I was gonna do this and then say goodnight to you guys. And maybe I will put it on top of my GPU and see if that helps. Well. Joseph, can you go through and grab everybody's Instagram handles for me so I can follow them after the stream? I didn't know it was good with alcohol markers. I think I have number four. Um, not necessarily. So it all boils down to what your preferences are as an artist and what helps you create the sort of art you want to create. It's not there. Inking with one or the other is not more legitimate or less legitimate. They're all legitimate ways to draw. They're all legitimate ways to paint. Um, I like knowing how to do a lot of these different things, partially because y'all know I hoard art supplies. So it justifies owning this massive hoard of art supplies, but also because having these skills means I can show other people how to do those skills. And I really love the moment when someone discovers the art supply that's going to change their life, you know? And I love being able to help facilitate that moment. So um, nibs are cool. If nibs are hard for you to use because they smear, um, or they cut the paper, don't use nibs, that's fine too. Um, I can do a brush inking demonstration in another video. I'm happy to do that. Um, we can do a brush pin inking demonstration in another video. What I use is, um, so art nerds are people who contribute to my Patreon. So they are paying money to help me do what I do. So I want to reward them and make it worth their while. So they, their sketch requests are done before other people's sketch requests. It doesn't mean I don't do, um, it doesn't mean I don't not do sketch requests for people who are not patrons. I do plenty of sketch requests for non-patrons. It's just, um, I want to make sure my art nerds get first pick since they're supporting what I do. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm generally not just swamped with requests. So if I don't get to your request that week, there's a very good chance I'm going to draw it the very next week. Because I usually do between three or four requests every evening. 
And I also try to leave time for drawing requests where people ask like, can you show me how to draw folds or can you show me, show me how to draw hair, that kind of stuff. No problem. Um, so I think, I think that about covers it. Um, if you guys ever want to see tutorials for something specific, or if you want to see me do something live on stream, fill out the link that Joseph posted for you guys, and I will get to it. I love taking your requests. It makes me feel good. <laughs> I enjoy it. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. So have a good evening, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this evening. And I hope I see you guys again next week. And send me your portfolios, send me your comics, send me your Instagrams, send me your Pinterest's, sisses. Aw, oh, man, thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. Because next week, we're going to take a look at everybody's art. We're going to compliment everybody. And people who want critiques are going to get critiques. So have a good evening, y'all. Bye. Aw, oh, thank you guys for joining me. It was a delight.